one of the bigger upgrades for the dredge deck after the banning was getting Forgotten Cave out of uh, Modern Horizons. That giving the Life from the Loam some real degenerate looking turns. Raja on the play, snow-covered island, Arkham's Astrolay. We've seen that one plenty this weekend, though this flavor of deck is one that we have not covered yet. Strosky's on a mold of five with Dredd, starting with stopping ground to 18 for Shriekhorn. Now, Shriekhorn has uh, suddenly become one of the better plays in the early turns, where I always thought it was one of the worst plays. <laughs> um, just one mana mill six is pretty powerful in a deck that has so many graveyard-related cards. I'm looking to see how quickly Raja can actually assemble the Felidar plus Sahili Rai combo because honestly that is going to be your easiest way to close the door against Dredge, especially in game one. Yeah, stuff like the uh, Ice Fang Kotals, not really that impressive here. Right, but that is kind of the strength of the deck is that you do get to basically play both games. So against the, the decks like Dredge or Bogles or Storm or even Paradox Outcome, you have the potential to just turn three, turn four, kill your opponent, thanks to the likes of Noble Hierarch. But at the same time, against the decks that have a bunch of interaction or removal, you get the Stoneforge Mystic Package. You get Ice Fang Quaddle to play defense. You even get Feldar Guardian blinking to Fairy Time Ravel to draw an extra card. Quite a lot happened here. We have Stoneforge Mystic on turn two for Raja. Zoroski uses the Tree Corn finds a Stinkweed Imp, dredges that, hits a Creeping Chill, and a prized Amalgam. So the Chill goes off, Raja to 16, Zorowski to 21. Yeah, I always love seeing a Dredger in the top four cards when you're Shriek Horning, just because you do uh, get to have that big Dredge turn. Now Zorowski, I think, uh, needs to have something like Cathartic Reunion as a follow-up here. Even a Haggle would be pretty good, just to be able to uh, put a lot of pressure on Raja this turn. Land number two is going to be City of Brass, and here's Cathartic Reunion. Discards a Wooded Foothills and Stinkweed Imp. The Imp will dredge. Yep, and found the Golgari Thug, so he's able to continue the dredge train here. Another Amalgam and a Creeping Chill as well. One of the two thugs dredged. Narcomoeba hit off of that dredge four, and one more dredge four on the way. Wow. Conflagrate, Stinkweed Imp, Life from the Loam, and another Life from the Loam. What a turn. Hitting that Narcomoeba, basically a perfect hit here off of the Cathartic because it allows them to bring back all these prize amalgams. Three coming back this turn, two Creeping Chills triggered, and a Conflagrate in the graveyard with Life from the Loam. This looks a lot like the dredge we're used to seeing. Yeah, really nice hit. Sulem into 13, Zorowski to 23 off of that second chill. And here comes three prized amalgams. Now, the Batter Skull does play a pretty nice role here in keeping Suleiman alive. The Batter Skull Germ comes down as a 4-4 lifelinker, eats a prized amalgam. You still take six, but you gain four back. And from 13, he's got some life to play with. Misty Rainforest, go, will be his turn. Interestingly, he also has Feldar Guardian in hand. I wouldn't be surprised to see the sequence here of uh, Alexander going attack with all of the creatures. The block coming out from the germ uh, makes a lot of sense. And then a follow-up uh, Conflagrate from Zorowski to kill the germ, the Stoneforge Mystic, and go to the face a bit. Seems like a no-brainer. And then Roger's going to get to untap and felled our Guardian to blink the Batter Skull to create that germ token again. Shikorn used in the upkeep. No relevant finds. Life from the Loam dredged. Another Golgari Thug hitting the bin. Here's an attack with all three Amalgams and the Narc Amoeba. Stoneforge Mystic will put in the Batter Skull for Suleiman. Germ jumps in front of one of the prized Amalgams. So it's going to be minus three on total... Life math here, so them into 10. All right, let's see what Zorowski does here, because he has the option to conflagrate, to get rid of the germ token for at least a turn. He also can just life from the limb and go for a much bigger conflagrate on the following turn. He also has haggle in hand with the Merchant of the Veil, so he can life from the limb into haggle. Looks like he's setting aside cards as if to discard them. Yeah, this conflagrate for three makes a lot of sense. Killing the Stoneforge Mystic, so it gets a lot harder to uh, bring back the Batter Skull and taking care of the Germ Token. But unfortunately for Zorowski, we're going to see a Felidar Guardian on this turn blinking the Batter Skull and creating uh, a defense that was previously shattered. No third land for Zorowski, so it was a real decision between Life from the Loam and Conflagrate. 
passes at 22 off the City of Brass. Suleiman will fetch to 9 for stomping ground end step. Not positive. I haven't. I don't think I, we've seen a forgotten cave in Zorowski's graveyard just yet. So, uh, not casting the life for long makes a little bit more sense. If he had found the forgotten cave and was able to dredge a Thinkoid Imp, that might have been a bit more desirable than the conflagrate. Maybe save it for a future turn. Sure. But here, I have to imagine Solomon wants to go ahead and Feldar guard into Blink, the Batter Skull, making another germ token that's a 4 4 life linker, protecting his life total from those prize amalgams. And if he's able to follow that up with a Sahili Rai, there's not going to be a whole lot Zorowski can really do about it. He'll fetch to eight off of Flooded Strand, finds another snow covered island. As you mentioned, Feldar Guardian hanging out in the hand. Be a big ask to have something better than Guardian bringing back Batter Skull germ. That's one of the strengths of this deck. It plays a fair game quite well. I mean, we see a really powerful start from Dredge just kind of faltering in the face of Batterskull Stoneforge Mystic. And now Felidar Guardian resetting the Batterskull and threatening an infinite kill next turn. Not sure if Sorowski is going to come up with this one, even though he had a busted start. He will Dredge Stinkweed Imp and look for something. See another prized amalgam going to the bin. That's the fourth copy. But just dredgers otherwise. Yeah, it does have life from the loam, so it can life from the loam back some lands and play uh, a land to get back blood gas and cast haggle. The hat's off now. Yeah. Things are getting serious in the future match area. It's hot under those lights. Oh, yeah. I tried to wear a beanie a couple times. Too much. Now you see life from the loam picking up Copper Line Gorge, Mountain, and Bloodstained Myers the third. I believe so. Might be Black Leaf Cliffs, actually. This is the same. All right. Lock it in. <laughs> kind of all the same. No Forgotten Caves, as you mentioned. Yeah, unfortunately, no Forgotten Cave yet. He is playing three copies, I believe. Yeah, the card is extremely good in the archetype. Yeah, three Forgotten Caves this weekend. Well, in previous iterations of Dredge, players, you know, were, were kind of cheating on lands, 17, 18, 19. But with the addition of Forgotten Cave, it's just so good. It kind of counts as like a, a spell in a lot of scenarios. You know, uh, before people were playing Dakmore Salvage because it's a land you could Dredge. But now that's just become fully replaced by uh, Forgotten Cave because of its synergy with Life from the Loam. Copperline Gorge brings back Blood Gas. Those two amalgams will be coming back later. Haggle will be cast. Yep, that's going to dredge five. That's two more Ooh. creeping chills. Holy moly. Raja going down to two. Alexander Patton his life total significantly. Unfortunately, won't be able to bring back that dredged blood ghast. Nope, but we'll be able to bring back both prize amalgams. Don't think it can really attack. An attack here... Both of the amalgams get blocked, and a gain of four happens. And then Narcomoeba gets through, and the blood gas gets through. So it's actually a plus one on the life if Alexander decides to attack. So my guess, passing of the turn, two prize amalgams come back. Narcomoeba at least comes across. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. Suleiman to one. And infinite you. Do you have Sahili or not? So the amalgams are back. But none of that matters if we see a combo. It was a valiant effort there from Zorowski. Well, Zorowski's tapped out. I don't think Raja has an infinite combo. You probably would have seen would've, it by uh, now. Would've, yeah. He would have been like, eh, I got it. Yeah. Here it is. is. This is the one. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Yeah. Now, I do expect an attack for four to come out here to gain Raja some life up to five. And if a double block happens on the germ, maybe a land from Raja will... Equip the Batter Skull to the Felidar Guardian to prevent a potentially lethal attack next turn, but that might not even be enough right there. Raja trying to figure out a way out here. Zorowski is now out of Creeping Chills. There is one more Conflagrate in the deck. So that's kind of it for ways to win outside of combat. Suleiman going to do some math here. Without the combo, the situation is quite a bit more tenuous on his side of things. No, for sure. I was just kind of expecting the combo to happen, and the fact that it hasn't means uh, Raja might actually be able to get out of this one alive. The Teferi Time Raveler can bounce a prize amalgam, 
draw a card, and that's going to allow an attack with a batter skull to not be able to be blocked up to five. Next turn can block up to nine. So two, two amalgams blocked, taking six from the rest of the creatures. So Raja can survive if Zorowski doesn't have much else this turn. Well, Zorowski will start with the dredge of life from the loam. Land, land, Narc Amoeba. Gets the Amoeba. And the fact that Narc Amoeba has flying is actually pretty relevant, which is nice. Gets over the germ token for free. Also can just kill the Teferi this turn without having to attack into it with all the stuff. So ask you looking at blockers and what the math is. So right now, Batter Skull on the Amalgam will put Suleiman to nine, block on the other creature, and then he has six power coming across otherwise. So he needs three more damage this turn. Two Blood Gas would do it. Yeah, so you can uh, dredge some lands here. Cycle Forgotten Cave before attacks. Potentially hit a couple Blood Gas, then play a land for the turn. So Life from Alone finds Forgotten Cave and a couple other lands. Life total not really in jeopardy here because of the, what, four creeping chills he's hit already? A nice 32 point life point starting total. Here's a cycle of Forgotten Cave. This time for Stinkweed Imp as the dredge. Five looks. Two Narc Amoebas. Yep, not what the doctor ordered, but still pretty good nonetheless. Not even sure if attacking all out is correct here because that allows the the germ token to just attack next turn basically unfettered. So I might just want to send one Narcomoeba here at Teferi to clock it, hold back the prize amalgams to gang block on the batter skull or uh, the Felidar if it gets the batter skull equipped to it. That Teferi was actually a lot better than it looked on the surface. Just bouncing the untapped prize amalgam so there was no gang block available on the on the batter skull token. Wooded foothills would be the land. Brings back one blood ghast. A little shy of lethal. Yeah, Teferi bouncing the fourth amalgam certainly changed that. Here's a send with all of the creatures that can attack. And then there's the three Narc Amoebas that entered this turn left behind, so there's the block on the two Amalgams. Yeah, that is going to be an attack to put Rajad back down to one, though. So if he's unable to find a Sahili, he's probably dead next turn. Alexander can probably dredge through the rest of his deck and find the last two Blood Gas as well, or the last Conflagrate. Thanks to Forgotten Cave and Life in the Loam, he's able to churn pretty hard. And now he has a bit more mana to work with on that front as well. Yeah, absolutely. We saw this sahili felidar combo be just oppressive in standard, but your standard opponents tended to give you more time to find it. Yeah, I mean, these, these modern decks are really fast, really consistent. I mean, we've seen, we've seen Dredge just get hammered over and over with bands from Golgar Grave Troll to Hogak to Faithless Looting to Bridge from Below, and now it's just utilizing m even more new cards with, with Haggle and Merchant of the Veil, but something as seemingly innocuous as Creeping Chill has just given it such new life. Quick library count. Zorowski has nine left over. Though I don't think we'll see him run out of cards. Attack with the germ. Suleiman back to five. Zorowski to 18. Teferi to two. Not a super important element to this matchup. Mystery no. Rainforest will be the land. Not a whole lot of sorceries being wanted to play at instant speed here. In fact, Looking at his deck list, actually has no sorceries, just astrolabes and a bunch of incense like Path Exile, Reman, Spell Pierce, Force Negation. Yeah, it's mostly the static ability is what he wants. Yeah. Static ability is quite good, making sure your opponent can't interact with your Feldar plus Sahili combo. But also just being able to blink the Teferi Time Raveler to bounce an extra permanent and draw an extra card is potent in a lot of scenarios. 
So we're back over to Zorowski. Once again has faded the combo and now is choosing what to dredge. And with only nine cards left in deck, this is going to leave him with just five. Finds a conflagrate. That should be more than enough to do it. Now, Alexander Zorowski doesn't know that Raja has no counter spells in his deck. And, but if he goes for a smaller conflagrate, something like Spell Queller could put a gum in the works. He has an abundance of cards in hand. You're right. I don't expect it to happen. This, this seems like a YOLO moment. Conflagrate you for all of it, except for one, holding the land back. All right, we might be seeing a response here from Suleiman. He's posturing like he has something. I'm looking at the deckless. He might think the spell queller does it. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Yeah, despite the flashback being a little Force bit counterintuitive. One copy of Force of Negation could be, could be the difference here. Yeah. Two copies of Remand here could help. So here's a fetch and response, so it could be something like Ice Fang Kotal trying to draw the Force of Negation. Sure, sure. That's also a possibility. After that fetch, though, I think that the combat kills him. Oh, I think you're right. But with Ice Fang Quaddle and Spell Queller as blockers, do you think that changes oh, the, the math at yeah, all? The Quaddle does change it, yeah. So he gets to hang on because of that blocker. But I think the Conflagrate just kills him. And maybe he drew... I wonder if he drew Sahili Rai off of the Ice Fang. <laughs> that would be pretty unfortunate. Right. Perhaps a mistake. I, don't, I didn't actually see the it draw for the turn. It was after a fetch. I don't know. It... He could have had an extra look to try to combo in his turn. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what's the what's the value in holding on to the ice fang on on till your opponent's turn, right? right. Like just because it has, they're flash just gonna shove. Doesn't mean you have to cast it at instant speed. Right. Correct. All right. So let's look at the the sideboards here for these two players. What we got? Yeah. For some for the four color snow Healy strategy, we have three Knight of Autumn, three Alpine Moon, two Collector Roofs, two Negate in a Breed, a Path to Exile, a Vendillion Click, an Internet Explosives, and a Sword of Light and Shadow. I'm looking over this sideboard here, uh, I don't really see any anti graveyard cards, Ryan. Do you see any anti graveyard cards in the Snow Healy sideboard? Uh, if you path to exile a creature on the battlefield, it does not go to the graveyard. That's true. That's true. So it looks like Raja, not going to have a whole lot of options here against this dredge deck. Uh, my guess, likely going to bring in negates to help fight cathartic reunion, big conflagrates, things like that. Uh, Path to Exile is just another way to exile the creatures instead of sending them back to the graveyard. Maybe even Dylan Click because it flies it can get over everything except Narc Amoeba. Maybe Engine Explosives, but this is a tough one. I think that he's just going to have to rely on that Sahili Rai Feldar Guardian combo to get the job done because he's not going to be able to win a fair game of Magic against this Dredgejack, especially because he doesn't have Rest in Peace or anything like that to stifle the Dredge Graveyard. Now, the combo seems to be the best line. We'll see if Zorowski is good at breaking that up post-sideboard, though. On his side, we have three Thought Seas, three Lightning Axe, three Ancient Grudge, two Abrupt Decay, two Nature's Claim, a Blast Zone, and a Damping Sphere. So here, if you're a Dredge, I think you want to have a little bit of interaction for the Felidar combo. I think Lightning Axe is a decent way to do that. Unfortunately, the Four Colors in the Healy deck does have Teferi Time Raveler, so it could force you into some weird spots where you can't actually interact with a combo. Um, I think Lightning Axe, Abrupt Decay, both potentially can come in. The Blast Zone is kind of a cheeky way to be able to interact with a combo uh, that uh, can be played through a Teferi Time Raveler, so I wouldn't mind that as one of, but this sideboard here uh, is way more geared towards the hardcore combo decks. Now, Zorowski does understand that the Snow Healy deck does have the Felidar Guardian Sahili Rai combo. Why else would you be playing Felidar Guardian in Modern? Right. So the Thought Seasons might come in to help break it up preemptively. Uh, there's a lot of options, but as always with decks like Dredge, you can't really afford to side more than three to five cards out in any given matchup unless you're completely changing what your deck does. Otherwise, you have a lot more hands that just kind of do nothing. And in this kind of a matchup, you just need to go fast and hope that you can get under any sort of graveyard hate they may have. So here on this very channel, every Tuesday and Thursday, we're running Versus Live, Aww. 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Formerly, you would have been able to see Ty Aww, Anderson. Oh, man. So check out the old VODs, though. We <laughs> got that content. Anyway, if you want to watch the live content every week, we have Ross Miriam, TV's Ross Miriam, and Corey Baumeister. Yeah, definitely got Pranjald. 
But he is, he was on TV for about 20 minutes one time. That's here on this very channel, twitch.tv slash SCG Tour. Yeah, and they, those guys, uh, they're going to be playing basically all the formats we play here on the SCG Tour. Standard, Modern, sometimes Legacy if we got a Legacy event coming up. Testing out all the newest decks uh, that come out each weekend, as well as some of their own decks just they think that could be good in the following weeks. Uh, put a spotlight on their own content, put a spotlight on fellow content creators on uh, Star City Games' own website, uh, and they do a great job. They're very entertaining, and they're very knowledgeable about the game. So if you want to up your game, make sure to check out Versus Live every Tuesday and Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern time on this here channel. Hit that follow button, and you'll see it if you just go to Twitch.tv whenever they go live. I am 0-1 lifetime against Alex Zorowski. Oh, really? Lost him in the top eight of an open in this very building about four years ago. How do you remember stuff like that? Uh, I don't even remember who I was married to four years ago. It, there's certain matchups that stand out more than because others. I've only been married once, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to answer your question in earnest and ignore the part where the conversation got derailed, but I clearly have failed at that. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> and by my bad, I mean <laughs> <laughs> I did exactly what I wanted. To do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Working <laughs> as intended. Sabotaging as Anyway, it. Zorowski, you versus Zorowski. Yeah, so I top aided with Grixis Delver in the modern format. Oh, yeah. And I really enjoyed do. playing that deck against the Simic Infect decks, were very popular. Yep. Zorowski was playing Golgari Infect. Right. And I got brutalized by Phyrexian Crusader. That card is quite strong, especially against red spells because it has <laughs> protection, protection from, red. from them. Yeah. Put a, put a Rancor on that beast. It really goes to town. It's hot. I was playing four mana leaks too. I just couldn't get under it. Nah. Just couldn't get. I yeah. won one game. I won Turn one, one game. noble hierarch off a of forest. Turn two. Oh, we can't cast. We can't cast it. I think he cast it on like turn five. I just, yeah. I just <laughs> wasn't good. All right. Clearly, Zorowski not well versed in dredge because he actually looks sad while he's mulliganing. You should look ecstatic while you're mulliganing. You're like, oh yes, I get to look at a new seven. <laughs> Holy crap! My deck only needs four cards to function. Here it is, Cathark Reunion. Is there two lands? There's two lands. All right, we're keeping. Yeah, you don't hate that. Put back Prize Amalgams and Archimibas. You get to go turn one Forgotten Cave, turn two Cathark Reunion, pitch Prize Amalgam and some other stuff, and hope for the best. Temple Garden, go for Suleiman. Drew it, <laughs> and even drew the life from the one. Perfect. Oh, don't you do it. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> He's fetching the thoughts. He's. He wants to hold on to the Forgotten Cave for the life from the Lum. I don't blame him, but that's going to slow his draw down significantly. And you don't really need to Thought Seize against this deck until A, either after they play Stoneforge Mystic, or B, after they already have either Sahili or Felidar Guardian on the table. Well, he could be concerned about having his life from the Lum Force of Negation. He could also be concerned about a Rest in Peace, so I don't blame him. I'm just saying. Sure. You're saying you should not register any of the fear yeah. 75 cards, zero fear. You saw his face, right? He's mulliganing at five and he looks sad. Yeah. No. He registered the sad. London mulligan. <laughs> it's great, baby. <laughs> mulligan at three. <laughs> land, land, cathartic reunion. Snap it off. Well, here's the thought, sees. Here's a card that's really good against cathartic reunion. Remand. Ooh. Yeah, that seems like a pretty easy take here. While there is a spell queller, if Zorowski's able to draw a, uh, a land here, Next turn that comes in untapped. <sighs> Chooses the spell caller over the remand. Don't love it, but I'll allow it. A remand and Ice Fang Coda left over with three lands. Zorowski to 15 for the trouble. Forgotten Cave tapped. Go. I would have cycled it. I know, I know, but you know there's a remand on the other side of the table. Just cycle it. Look for a green source so you can start going to town with life from the loam. Yeah, it's the second land, but it's not a green source. Yeah, cycling it makes some sense. A little greedy. If you cycle it and miss, yeah, it looks bad and you're on camera, but you know what? It's still the right play. Sometimes you got to fight through the variance. Check your fear at the door. Yeah. Now, if he had done what I said and just cast turn through Cathartic Union, though, it would have been bad. It would have been real bad. bad. It would have been very bad. So you should take some of, some of my advice. advice. Do as I say sometimes. Ish. Not as I do ever. <laughs> <laughs> I 
He does have the green source. Here is Stomping Ground. Shocks to 12 for it. Life from the Loam is remanded. We knew that was going to happen. Well, it looks like Suleiman actually drew a lot of real good stuff over the last few turns. Has Feldar Guardian. He's about to play and bling the Squaddle. And has Sahilirai in hand to combo next turn. So Zorowski under a boatload of pressure here. Good Let's see value, what he can put up. Good combo pace. And Zorowski's got about nothing going on. Yeah, it looks like just a life from the loam here going to be cast from Zorowski. Ooh, no, he drew a cathartic. Oh, he had the cathartic. I'm dumb. <laughs> I forgot. The shields were down for a turn. Scards, life from the loam amalgam. Dredges into a Golgari thug. Finds an amoeba, a creeping chill. And takes one draw. All right, so the amoeba is going to be able to return the prize amalgam. Drain for three and the creeping chill, but... Unless Zorowski has a one-mana piece of interaction here, or land pl plus Abrupt Decay. He's going to get blown out here by the Sahilirai combo. Let's see if he's got it. Shock for Stomping Grounds. So after the Creeping Chill, life totals are 16 Suleiman, Zorowski 12. Two untapped mana left up here. Now, he might have it. I don't actually know if Zorowski has the Abrupt Decay or not. I thought I saw one earlier, but I could have been mistaken. Certainly a bluff worth making. Absolutely. Sometimes the bluff is just as good as having it because the Snow Healy decks, or the, you know, it's effectively the Splinter Twin decks just have to respect it on some occasions. But here, Suleiman's not really under a lot of pressure, so I could definitely see Suleiman actually just going for... Uh, uh, the com are just going for like more fair plays, just waiting to see. Currently, a judge call happening for a missed prized amalgam trigger. Couple things about this. It's weird. Amalgam is mandatory. It has well, to happen, and it also falls in this weird jurisdiction of zone changes, where if you miss a card changing zones, it ends up just happening on the next turn. It can happen immediately if the opponent wants it to happen immediately. So, for example, um, let's say that the Snow Healy deck was instead a deck with Supreme Verdict. Yeah. Uh, you could choose to have the Prize Amalgam come back immediately because it was supposed to already be in play, and then your Supreme Verdict could sweep it up along with the rest. Sure. Um, but you also can choose to just have it come in at the beginning of the next phase, yeah. I believe, Most or maybe it's the next. thing, sometimes your opponent misses a trigger, you can decline it entirely. Yes. That is not true for the delayed zone change. Yeah, the zone changes one are super weird. The only ones that really come to mind off the top of my head. Stupid Obzadat. Uh, Obzadat, Obzadat, Ghost Council, as well as Prize Amalgam. Um, zone changes are just very weirdly worded in the way that they work with triggers. Um, they don't work the same as other missed triggers. Right. Which I think is dumb, but, you know, who am, who am I? I think it's actually quite sophisticated, and if I was forced to design a game with a rules engine remotely as complicated as Magic the Gathering, nobody would play it because I would fail spectacularly. Shut, that's just, shut up! That's just my two cents. Just let me be mad. Yeah, you can be mad. <laughs> you can be mad. Just be mad on your own time. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we're back here in the booth while they get that uh, thing situated. But as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be resolved pretty easily. It just, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of explaining. Sometimes people appeal judge calls, and that's fine. Uh, we always encourage appeals to the head judge if you are unsure about a ruling. And it is a weird one. We're all, yeah, and we're all human. Uh, judges make mistakes on occasion, and in, in those scenarios, you always want the, the person who's at the very tip top, who is put there for a reason because of their extensive rules knowledge and tournament running knowledge, um, to get, get their way in. Yep. So we're going to take some time here while they get that sorted out to talk about our day two metagame breakdown. Nice. We actually have three decks tied for the most representatives. We have 12 copies of each of these three decks, 138 players in day two, so a little bit less than 10% for all of these decks. But we have Amulet Titan, Urza Ascendancy, and Jund. Now, I want to point out that there are multiple Urza decks, and they are kind of spread out among different archetypes. There are 25 decks, as far as I can see here, 
copies or decks with copies of Urza Lord High Artificer in them. But yep. as far as actual archetypes are concerned, the Amulet Titan deck at the top with 12 copies makes a lot of sense with its success last weekend. Uh, once upon a time, kind of reinvigorating the archetype, giving you a reason to come back and try it again. It also is just phenomenal in the deck. Uh, the one that stands out to me, though, 12 copies of Jund. Yes. Did not expect that. Just regular Jund. Yeah. What do you? I mean, really? Yeah. Jund? Just... Just Jund? All the time. Jund them. Can't help. I don't, I don't. I can't think of a reason why Jund would have a particular resurgence right now. Because <laughs> it's just rock. And nothing yeah, beats nothing rock. beats rock. Nothing yeah. beats rock. Jund never left. <laughs> don't, don't call it a comeback. <laughs> All right. What's, uh, what's after that, though? Those three decks, two of them make sense. One kind of off the cuff. Not sure. 11 Mono Green Tron. 11 Burn. A lot happening there. Urza Outcome at 8. As you mentioned, a lot of Urza decks. Grixis Death Shadow at six, that's half. We got our ruling here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get down to the match, get you caught up with that. Remember this judge holds about prized amalgam. Alright, so I guess there's an update to this uh, zone change noise. Prized amalgam staying in the bin. Look, I don't care. I love it. <laughs> I always thought that it should stay in the graveyard until you re-trigger it if you miss the trigger. I thought it was weird to have exceptions to the miss trigger rule. So, yeah. Give it to me. Love it. I also just like being wrong about rules sometimes. It's refreshing, yeah, especially I, when they've been changed. I call it judges just all the time. It's learning. It's just a learning experience. We are learning. Yes. All right, Raja goes for another Felidar Guardian instead of the Sahili combo. It's going to allow Zorowski to resolve Loam and kind of start going ham with Forgotten Cave. Maybe. We did not see a combo here. Uh, Zorowski, as you recall, shocked for that stomping ground last turn. Giving some pause to Suleiman's side of things. Oh, no. Raja drew Spell Pierce. He's going to expect Assassin's Trophy. Not Abrupt Decay. Fortunately for him, Zorowski <laughs> has abrupt against death. So Sahili targets fell at our guardian, looking for infinite guardians. All right, so the new copy comes in, and Zorowski is waiting for the new copy to target Sahili Rai, because if you kill the Sahili in response to the minus of Sahili, the new Felidar Guardian can just blink the Ice Fang Quaddle or the Astrolabe and draw an extra card. So heads up play from Zorowski there. One copy of Felidar Guardian made, but that's not infinite. A bit shy of infinite. <laughs> we got the new Bernie token. Nice. Or sorry, Benny. Benny, 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 Benny Smith. Smith with the, the clone token. We have a clone of Felidar Guardian coming in here. <laughs> and you never get to see it. Just it's the nice. one. Just the one Benny. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> Currently a 1-4. Three 1-4s rumbling across. Zorowski actually to 8. Suleiman fetches to 15 off of a Prismatic Vista. And it looks like a Stoneforge Mystic is forthcoming. I believe he had the choice between leaving up Path to Exile or Spell Pierce. Yeah. Ended on Path to Exile. But he does have the Astrolabe, so I think he's trying to disguise the Spell Pierce. Mm. So here, Zorowski can go untap, dredge, uh, life from the loam, try to hit some goods, cast loam, and then if he goes for like multiple spells on the same turn, the spell pierce could catch him off guard. But my guess is that this turn is just going to have Suleiman using Path to Exile on a prize amalgam during the end step. He found Sword of Light and Shadow coming off the sideboard. I suppose there are a number of black creatures in Zorowski's deck, and sometimes you just kind of need to fight through them. It also, if it connects, can bring back the Spell Queller, which can pose problems for Zorowski. Light and Shadow, one of those equipment that you see occasionally with Stoneforge Mystic, but most of the time you see either Feast and Famine or Fire and Ice. The new ones, as far as I am concerned, don't exist. I've seen a small amount of Sinew and Steel. It never does anything, though. It's kind of like the uh, sword equivalent of Manriki Gusari. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the blue and white one does two things that I would not expect a blue or white deck to do, which is really kind of frustrating. It's like, oh, we get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a thing and then proliferate. Yeah. So you get to put... 
two plus one plus one counters on a thing. The blue white one does not excite me. I cannot even pretend to be interested in that one. It does put counters on planeswalkers, which is kind of cool, I guess. But like, uh -huh. if you already have a planeswalker and you're connecting with a sword, right? Like, uh, big deal. The situation does not scream, "I need help." Yeah, the swords are supposed to connect and do something great by themselves, in my opinion. Not a very exciting turn for Zorowski. Sets up a Golgari Thug. I haven't seen sort of body of mine in a while. That I always liked that one because it just generated more bodies for uh, the sort. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of modern decks that play out of the graveyard. Perhaps a bit less true without Faithless Suiting in the format. Here's a shock for Steam Vents from Suleiman to 12. Stoneforge Mystic's going to put in, presumably, that sort of Light and Shadow. Unfortunately, it raises dead. You can't get back the Sahili, though if things were different, you could get back a Felidar Guardian. No, but getting back the Spellcrawler is pretty good. And uh, the problem is I think he's one mana short of being able to use Path to Exile as well. And so a Chum Block from Narcomoeba here is going to shut this down pretty easily. Sword gets hooked up to the Kotal. Kotal and possibly a Guardian? Just the Kotal coming across. I want to hold back the Guardians in case some blood gas start coming your way. Sure. Yeah, he's at 10 now. Narc Amoeba jumps in front. And back to Zorowski. If you attack with Thug, all, or if you attack with Felder Garden also, there's a double block potential for Zorowski. Uh, Golgari Thug on uh, Felder Guardian and Narcomoeba chumping the Quaddle. That allows you to put the Narcomoeba back on top because they both go to the graveyard at the same time. And then putting the Narcomoeba on top, and then you're definitely going to dredge again. You're just going to get it again. Pretty nice hit for Zorowski. Dredging Stinkweed Imp finds Conflagrate. Doesn't quite have 10 cards in hand but it's a lot of reach. Looks like he's going to fetch Bloodstain Mire to start his turn. Oh, he thought better of it. Almost took his hand off. Cast Creeping Chill. Ooh. Okay. Sullivan to 7, Zorowski to 13. All right. Don't cast that one a lot. No, I feel like he's going to conflagrate here, though, and that's going to end up with him getting hit with a Spell Pierce. So now he will fetch the Bloodstained Mire, going to 12, going to 10 off of Blood Crypt. Tap of 3, Stinkweed Imp. Can't pierce that one. Can quell it. Yeah, can quell it, and you get to attack with Ice Fang and the Spell Queller. You get to gain the 3 life back that you just lost from the Creeping Chill. And you get to get a Spellcaller out of the graveyard. So everything is looking pretty good for Raja pretty well. All right. So clock is getting a bit low, just over 12 minutes here. Though these players do have a time extension from that judge call not yet reflected on the clock. So it's actually more like 16. Yep. This game is pretty close to wrapping up, I think, for, for Raja. Um, I don't expect Vrowski to be able to get out of this particular spot too easily. I think a little too much is going on. But if Suleiman actually wins this game, I think it's going to be pretty hard for him to actually win game three without the Sahili Rai combo. Both players here might need some help going into game three of winning in time. Both decks can certainly be explosive. It gets way harder when the games become interactive. Path to Exile on Golgari Thug. How much power does Suleiman have on the battlefield? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little shy of lethal. Eight point attack here coming across though. Going to draw or gain three life up to ten. Getting back the Spell Queller. Now has Spell Queller plus Spell Pierce protection. It's going to be pretty hard for Zorowski to do a lethal conflagrate. You know what would have been lethal here? Hmm. Sort of fire and ice. True that. <laughs> As it stands, well. <laughs> though, the Light and Shadow does put Suleiman to 10. Narcomoeba also wouldn't have been able to block. <laughs> also true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's a dredge of life from the loam. All right, so this is going to be a dredge from loam. Uh, Zorowski can cast life from the loam, but I'm pretty sure that's going to get hit with a Spell Queller. 
because that's going to send Zorowski up pretty high on uh, cards in hand. Well, Life from the Loam seems to have, well, it's on the stack. Forgotten gave, two fetch lands targeted, and as you mentioned, Spell Queller shows up. All right, and there goes Conflagrate for three. It's going to get back Life from the Loam. He's going to get to cast it, get back the three lands. And he's going to just dr try to dredge for... More Creeping Chills or something, yeah. I guess? I don't know. Creeping Chills and Blood Ghasts. So he can dredge Life from the Loam with uh, Forgotten Cave. And then he can Life from the Loam again. He hasn't played a land for turn. I'm not sure if he has a land that can come in untapped and cast a Conflagrate. Finds Blood Gas, Conflagrate, Narc Amoeba. Holy man. Oh, no. Cast Life from the Loam. Gets back Forgotten Cave again. This time it's Spell Pierce, though. Okay. Yeah, the Spell Pierce plus Spell Caller, I think, was just enough to keep it from, from getting out of control. And at just two life, thinks Zorowski is out. I think we should move on to game three pretty quick here, since the clock might be an issue for both players. Right, certainly. Especially if you spend some more time mulliganing to five. Yeah, I mean, he can play a fetch line, get back blood gas, which bring back some, brings back some Malcolms, but Amalgams can't block because they're uh, coming in taps. Yeah, this is certainly lethal here. He could. I don't think he has a way to dredge again. He can't find creeping chills and gain life, so yeah, right. he's going to pick him up here. So everything's all tied up. And not through a combo game. Suleiman actually just able to grind out Zorowski in that bout. Yeah, he did the thing that I did not think his deck could do, which was grind out Dredge. But with that said, the Dredge deck's draws there were not particularly good. Never put a prize amalgam onto the battlefield, so. Time extension now reflected in the match clock here, just over 13 minutes as players shuffle up for game number three. I do think that we as modern players and speculators do have to recalibrate for Dredge without Faithless Looting. Sure. The deck definitely significantly diminished in power level. Oh, absolutely. But Cathartic Reunion draws are still completely busted. True. Um, you know, we, we see time and time again Cathartic Reunion draws on turn two just being outrageous in the amount of power they can put on the battlefield, the amount of uh, free kind of effects you get off of Creeping Chill, Narc Amoeba, things of that nature. Uh, even just finding conflagrates and life from the limbs for future use, you know. The the dredge deck has a pretty good short game because of the cathartic reunions. It also has a pretty good late game because of life from the loam, uh, as well as uh, Forgotten Cave alongside those conflagrates. It was rare before that Spell Pierce would be of much consequence against the deck, though. Sure. Just and being able to flash back the looting, you know. Right. Now... It's, uh, tagging Conflagrate has been pretty good for a little while, though. Conflagrate has been one of the sicker cards in the last, like, five years or so. The Golgari Grave Troll and Ban honestly didn't actually help the archetype all that much. And I think the ban, the reban of it put it in a spot where uh, it was palatable again, but it was still completely busted with Faithless Looting, uh, still just, you know, wrecking up the place. Getting a lot of new tools with things like cathartic or uh, cathartic reunion and creeping chill, and even a, a, around the time of the grave troll unban, that was approximately when amalgam was printed. Yep. So the card, the deck's sure. just gotten a bunch of upgrades in the last few years. Oh, absolutely. Also, you know, relevantly, three dredge cards banned: faithless looting, grave troll, bridge. I from wouldn't below. even. I wouldn't even consider bridge from below a dredge card, and I think Hogak's kind of a cheaty dredge card. The first iteration that I saw with Hogak didn't look anything like the traditional dredge deck that we'd seen. They were all uh, like Altar of Dementia, Vengevine variants. They looked way more like the dredgevine decks we'd seen with, you know, um, a lot less troll and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. They just had this combo element with Altar of Dementia and Hogak. After the, the Bridge from Below ban, you know, um, Alter Dimension got, Dimension got a lot worse because it wasn't a self-sustaining auto mill with Hogak. But, uh, you know, it did kind of take the wind out of the sails a little bit. But then the deck just went full Vengevine, no tricky stuff, just crazy good beatdown. Yeah, Bridge was a uh, significant part of Tom Ross and Ross Miriam's dredge decks when Grave Troll was unbanned. Though after that ban, Bridge didn't really show up until Hogak. I, uh, I'm actually kind of upset right now. How's that? So I, uh, 
they both played the deck because of me. Because mm. uh, I wrote an article about it. Cause maybe some, maybe look, you should have won the Open. Maybe I should have. <laughs> I played the deck that weekend. Tom made some changes, as Tom does, to every deck that he plays. Right before the tournament, doesn't tell anybody. <laughs> so. But uh, me and Ross played the same 75. I went 0-3, and he won the tournament. So, so it's, it's like that sometimes. Sometimes. It's Roski, I believe, on 6 this game. Starting things off with Fetch Shock. Thought sees once again. Sees a double Sahili spell pierce and a gate hand. It's a pretty defensive hand with a spell pierce and the negates. We'll see if Zorowski goes for the spell pierce on the tag and then has a cathartic union to follow up. Despite three different colors of lands, Suleiman's hand also a, a little shaky on mana with a four color deck. He has Prismatic Vista, Island Mountain. Yeah, but luckily for him, the only real green card in the main deck is Icewing Coatl and one copy of Oko Thief of Crowns. The Noble Hierarchs are not that good. Uh, unless you can play them on turn one. But if he does draw the Noble Hierarch, it does open up the white mana, so he could just play it. Yeah, finding Forest, casting Noble, everything would be good. So one Sahili taken off the Thought Seas, Island to go for Suleiman. Copperline Gorge is land number two for Zorowski, no other action. Mountain go for Suleiman. I believe Force of Negation has been drawn for Suleiman since the hand has been seen. All right. Spell Pierce is in hand for Raja. I don't know if Zorowski didn't have a third land to play or just wants to get the Spell Pierce taken out of hand now. It leads on Thoughtseize. Has a mountain in hand. Maybe just wants to bait the Spell Pierce here. Then he's going to play Cathartic Union afterwards. I don't mind that play. It is going to get caught by a... Uh, a force negation, but Suleiman actually just lets the thoughts he's resolve. Doesn't want to leave the shields down. Doesn't really want a two for one with force negation just yet either. So thoughts he shows. We already knew about spell spell pierce negate Sahili. Sees another Sahili drawn and that force of negation. That is all three Sahilis. So Zorowski here might want to go ahead and just take a second one and then. If he's able to deal with the third one, that's going to be all she wrote for the combo. It's going to have to be a fair game from here on out. So the plans seem to be Thought Seize, and if you get countered, then Spell Pierce or Negate, whichever is left over, is no longer up. Right. But seeing this hand is kind of a mess. He takes Force of Negation and attempts Life from the Loam. Yeah, and this is one you don't really mind if it gets countered because it's only getting back a Bloodstained Mire. So Suleiman, I would imagine, is just going to let this resolve. Unfortunately for him, the Force of Negation could have exiled this. You hate to see it. So Zorowski at 13 off of that thought sees Life from the Loam resolves. Gets back Bloodstained Mire. I'm curious if he gets aggressive here and just goes fetch Sahili and starts uh, churning through his deck for a Felidar Guardian. You know, he has to imagine that uh, if he just sits back on these counter spells for the next few turns, he, he's just going to get buried by the slow dredge. You know, the draw th or the three from Life from the Loam each time. If he finds a Forgotten Cave, it's going to get really bad really fast. And the counter spells don't do a whole lot against it because of how uh, many times you can start playing uh, Life from the Loam every single turn. Right. Suleiman uses Prismatic Vista, finds Plains, Jeskai Mana online, casts a Healy, pluses it, does one to Zorowski, scries. Yeah, but unbeknownst to Suleiman, there is going to be a Kazaric Union cast this turn, more than likely, and it could, we could have a, one of those explosive dredge turns. Now, uh, oddly enough, though, Zorowski only has the one dredger in hand with the life from the loam, so the top three cards don't produce another dredger. It's going to be a fairly weak Cathartic Reunion turn. So Cathartic Reunion discards life from the loam, which was dredged, and Creeping Chill. Hits another chill, so that's going to put Suleiman to 16, Zorowski to 15, but two draws off the Reunion otherwise. Yeah, but he did find a Forgotten Cave, so he could go fetch land here, uh, cast loam, get back. Uh, the Forgotten Cave that's in the graveyard and the fetch line that he cracks. And then the next few turns are going to be uh, just Life from the Loam plus Cycle, Life from the Loam plus Cycle, and that's pretty darn good. Yeah, here's that Bloodstained Mire. Life from the Loam gets it and cave back, like you said. Goes to 12. He shocked for a stomping ground. Had to get green mana. All right, let's see if Suleiman can find the Felidar Guardian. I saw a white card in hand, but I think it was a Path to Exile. I believe that it was. He does need a fourth land still as well to assemble the combo. So Sahili 
puts Zorowski to 11. Another scry for Suleiman, but he's kind of looking for land and guardian. Yeah, but he does have uh, the next few turns kind of not locked down, but kind of slowed down from Zorowski. He has Negate here, which can just counter the life from the loam off the top. But a land in hand and a blood gas is the find. And he has the ability to cycle Forgotten Cave to get back life from the loam. So, dredge over Blood Gas, Loam, starts his turn, cycling Forgotten Cave, dredges that Loam, finds Abrupt Decay and two Stinkweed Imps. Some big dredges incoming. Cycle Forgotten Cave, dredge Stinkweed Imp, prized Amalgam, Golgari Thug, Stinkweed Imp, Shriekhorn, Wooded Foothills. Yeah, but he also has the ability to play a land, get back Blood Gas, which returns the prized Amalgam as well. So even if this life from the loam gets countered with a spell pierce or negate, doesn't matter all that much. Still going to apply a lot of pressure. Can just dredge the life from the loam next turn and try again. Narcomiba puts the Healy down to four. Here's a cast on life from the loam. So that will get spell pierced. Got to cast it eventually, right? Yep. Bloodstained Mire gets back bloodgast. Prized Amalgam will come back later. Zorowski's got that this time. And here's the Amalgam. Back to Suleiman. Could Path to Exile on end step. Yeah, I, I quite like using your mana here and using Path to Exile on the Prize Amalgam just to make sure that your Sahili can't die next turn because if you can't protect it, uh, it's going to be really hard to assemble Felidar Guardian plus Sahili with only three lands and nothing on the battlefield to start. Did fire off the path. Now he's going to put Sahili back to five, put Zorowski to ten, scry one. He's given this one a think. It's, it might be land number four. Oh no, it looks like he has time to ground in, in hand. So it's a maybe it's Ice Fang Quaddle or something like that that can protect, uh, potentially protect uh, the Sahili. He does decide to leave it on top, so it must be a pretty good one. Yeah, leaves it on top, plays Stomping Ground, tapped, and passes. I very much doubt that it was a Feldar Guardian because of how much time he took actually thinking about uh, the scry. But he could have also been kind of debating Zorowski to thinking that it's not Feldar Guardian. Because if he just goes, look, top, fourth land, go. Yeah. It just kind of gives it away immediately, right? Right. How do you feel about the line of snapping off, keeping Ice Fang Kotal on top? That would have been sick. Anyway, that didn't happen. Zorowski's going to dredge life from alone. Finds Conflagrate this time. Probably not good enough. I think it just... It might actually just be Feldar. Because here... Well, I guess... You know, he has the backup loam in hand. I guess Raja didn't know that for sure. Life from loam cast and negated. The creatures, Narcomiba and Bloodgast, will attack Sahili down to two. Here's another life from the loam. A couple forgotten caves. I'm surprised. Three, I'm surprised this was a post combat because he could have potentially done some cycling here with these forgotten caves, hit a couple creeping chills and a blood gas, and maybe brought them back to attack for some more. Yeah, exactly. Two creeping chills will put Suleiman to ten. Uh, he just wants to clean up this Sahili ride. The conflagrate for X equals two does that nicely. It also puts a couple of dredgers from hand in back into the graveyard. So Suleiman draws Arkham's Astrolabe. Okay, so a redraw is the kind of card that could put it on the bottom or top. Cost him a mana to redraw, though. Think about whether to play that backup Sahili or leave up Negate. I have to imagine uh, either is basically a losing proposition because your uh, Sahili is very likely to die one way or another. And uh, holding up the negate is not really going to help fight through all the extra dredges from the Forgotten Caves. He has three Forgotten Caves in hand. That means he's going to get to mill over about 20 cards this turn with the Stinkweed Imps. He's going to find multiple copies of, Conf or of uh, Creeping Chill, more than likely. And they can't be countered because it's cycling. Lands on casting Sahili, puts it to four, scribes to the bottom. Plays Flooded Strand and passes. So Zaraski's at eight. He will dredge Stinkweed Imp. Merchant of the Veil, Blood Crip, Light from the Loam, City of Brass, and Narcomoeba. That does it, Narcomoeba. I don't know if there's any prize amalgams to trigger. I believe the one we've seen has been exiled. 
First cycle here is going to dredge another Stinkweed Imp. There's five more cards coming. A couple lands, Shriekhorn, Golgari Thug, another land. Nothing too exciting there, but he still has a couple more Forgotten Caves. Yeah, a couple more Forgotten Caves and the potential to Life from the Loam in Forgotten Cave one more time after that, at least. Life from the Loam dredge finds an Amalgam and Conflagrate. Yeah. The uh, Amalgam he just found doesn't see the Narcomoeba that's already there. Right. Now, he could have put the Narcomoeba trigger on the stack and then cycled Forgotten Cave again. That's something that you see a lot on Magic Online as people kind of figure out these micro-interactions in the deck. It's a little harder to kind of visualize that in real-life play, though. Sure. Seems extremely likely he'll get a Blood Gast. Or here's another Narc Narcomoeba as he dredges another Imp. Yeah, Narcomoeba and finds another uh, Prize Amalgam as well. So both those are going to come back. And now it's basically going to be whether or not Suleiman can find a Felidar Guardian off the top and whether or not Zorowski can actually just kill the Sahila right this turn. Did find the other Conflagrate, likely going to be able to do that, which should shut the door on Suleiman's chance to actually win this game. And now that they're in turns, it's going to be hard chill, to do it the other way. Put Suleiman to 13, Zorowski to 11, so very close to being at that Bloodgast has haste threshold. Also, the Conflagrate makes it pretty easy, like you said. So he's going to get back two Forgotten Caves and a Blood Crypt. The Blood Crypt can allow him to cycle the other Forgotten Cave again, or it can just allow him to go untap land, conflagrate. More cycling. Golgari Thug will be dredged. There's a Blood Ghast and another Amalgam. Checking the cards in library. Is that like three or four for Zorowski? It's not very many. I know that. Four cards. He'll be adding a lot of power at the end step, but looks like a couple of good ones are left in that stack. Yeah, he's just checking his sideboard to make sure he still has two or three Creeping Chills left over. I believe he's only gone through one. So I think in the last four cards, there are potentially three Creeping Chills. Although he may have discarded one earlier to a Conflagrate or something that I might have missed. But he does get to bring back another Blood Guest here. That's going to trigger the Amalgams. All three of those coming back. Shocks to nine for that. Cycles Forgotten Cave for Life from the Loam. Creeping Chill, so that will put Suleiman at 10. Zorowski to 12. Yeah, and blood he gas. really just wanted to hit one more so he could give these Blood Gas haste. But with only one card left in the deck, he's going to have to deal lethal next turn. And I believe he should be able to do it. Conflagrate ought to do it. It needs to resolve is the thing. He'll get a bunch of amalgams, though, and combat also is a nice way to shore it up. Yeah. This would have been, in my opinion, this would have been a great turn to actually conflagrate while Sealmate's shields were down. You've seen a lot of counter magic from him after this. Sure. All right, so a couple amalgams come back. I think there's a setup of what saw what. Minimally, one amalgam coming back means that the others will come back on Suleiman's turn. I think that Zorowski is assuming that the Amalgams are Maze, and I'm not 100% that they are a May ability. I think all of them are forced to come back. You can miss it on accident, but I don't think you can miss it on purpose. It is a mandatory trigger. It's possible that he brought two back and passed the turn and then was just like, you know, it's fine. I'm pretty sure Suleiman is just going to pack them up after this because there's well more than nine power in the battlefield. He has a handful of nothing. I pass the turn here. All Alexander Zrowski needs to do is declare an attack. Should be good here. Has no cards left in deck, though. And there it is. Yeah, it was turn number two, but Zrowski would have lost if we got to turn number four. As it stood, he had lethal there. So Alexander Zrowski advances to 10-2 and two on dredge. and Sula